Hello, we are back. All right, yesterday we had a lot of fun reading the middle of the book, and we learned that Richie is actually proud of his sister because she won the game for his team by hitting that winning point, that puck. Okay, and so yesterday I got to thinking, I think I want to add how her schema is changing. Drop my pen, sorry. So I went back to my graphic organizer that I made and I added Trisha to it. I added Trisha. So I said Trisha, the way she's thinking, because her schema folder just grew and I started to think about what are the things she noticed about hockey that she hadn't noticed before. The first thing that came to mind was the gear is really heavy. Do you remember when she said that? Well, dear, it's a contact sport. And then she fell on her bum right away because she realized, wow, this ice is pretty slick. And then her big aha moment was, I can stay in the penalty box the whole game, right? She was learning as she was going and her schema folder was changing as she was going. So I went ahead and added that. You do not have to add it to yours, but I did add it to mine because I thought it was pretty interesting how her schema was changing and I wanted to point that out to you. Today, we're going to finish up the book and we're really going to see how Richie's schema changes about ballet. It gets pretty crazy here at the end. <laughs> he doesn't really have as good of a time as she did playing hockey. So let's go ahead and get started and we're also going to see how their relationship changes as they do this. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. Look at his face. No! Well, I guess I showed Richie all right. I had to admit though, hockey was not the piece of cake I'd thought. Scheme of change. But now it was Richie's turn. He had to come to my, my, to my ballet classes and dance in my recital. Richie was good to his word. He practiced hard and even stopped teasing me about Paul LeBlanc. Finally, the night of the recital arrived. All of Miss Barrent's ballet school students were in a dither. Richie and I were in the dressing room. I ain't wearing this, he hissed as I held up his costume. I'll look like a flower and all my friends will be out there tonight. I had to wear your hockey gear, so you are wearing it, I insisted. His outfit. <laughs> Richie complained as we all did our warm-up at the bar. He complained when we put on our stage makeup. And he complained that after all that, he was too exhausted to go on. Guess it's not as easy as you thought, huh? I sneered. We peeked out of the curtain. The whole school was there again. Richie turned so red, his freckles almost disappeared. On stage, on stage, people, Miss Barrent called as she clapped her hands. We took our places on stage. The music began and the curtains parted. All of us were in a perfect fifth position, all except Richie. <laughs> his feet were turned in instead of out as we started our dance in unison. He jumped when we glided. He twirled when we leaped, when we glossidad. Upstage, he glossed uh, downstage. When we did our pas de chat, Richie hopped around like a rabbit. And at the end of the number, as we all did our grand our arabesque, Richie lost his balance and grabbed for the curtain. That's when the audience started to snicker. Poor guy. He said he could do it, didn't he? What would, yeah, he said it was easy. It wasn't that his schema folder on ballet? Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. The next two numbers went very well because Richie wasn't in them. Richie hid from all of us during the intermission. Then it was time for the Nila number, the main number of the second part of the recital. Richie was a wood nymph. All he had to do was one single tour jeté, just one tour jeté. Well, he did it all right and landed right on Paul LeBlanc. Paul lost his balance and fell into a fairy tree. The tree tipped, knocked over a gazebo, and finally fell through the backdrop. As we were all doing our twirls around the floor, we knew to watch a spot so that we didn't get dizzy. Richie didn't. So he twirled and got so dizzy that this time he grabbed the curtain and almost swung off the stage. The audience roared with laughter. 
poor guy. He's having a hard time. Oh dear. The curtain closed for the second intermission. Miss Barrett held her head. Your brother has ruined the entire production, she shrieked. Then she collapsed in a heap in a director's chair and glared at me. Miss Barrett, we still have the finale, the adagio duet with Paul and me. We have our closing solos, I pleaded. Miss Barrett managed a weak smile, only to be replaced with utter horror as Paul LeBlanc limped toward her. Miss Barrett, I can't do the last number, he wailed. I sprained my ankle when Richie fell on me. I wanted to cry. We all looked at Richie and just shook our heads. Richie saw the tears well up in my eyes. Wait, he called out. I can do Paul's number. Everyone groaned. You have done enough tonight, Richard, Miss Barrett said sadly. No, Miss Barrett, I really can. I've been practicing all of the steps to help Trisha rehearse. I can do it with my eyes closed. Miss Barrett, maybe he really can, I said. He has been practicing those steps. The grand lift at the end is the only one that still needs work. Please let me try, Richie pleaded. Miss Barrett finally agreed, but no lift at the end. Oh, boy. Aw, aren't they cute, brother and sister? Paul's costume fit Richie perfectly. We took center stage. The music started and the curtain opened. The audience started to giggle. But as we took our first steps, Richie was in complete unison with me. He lifted me when he was supposed to. He was doing the right steps in time with the music. He was actually graceful. The audience wasn't laughing anymore. Then Richie took his pose while I did my solo. I danced around the entire stage and then did 36 consecutive releves across the stage on point. Everyone leapt to their feet and cheered. Then I posed and it was Richie turn Richie's turn to take Paul's solo. I had no idea what he was going to do. I wasn't sure if he knew all of Paul's dance. To my astonishment, Richie did the highest leaps I had ever seen. The audience clapped, and then he was ready for the final pirouette. He pointed, snapped his leg in a jeté, and spun. He was a blur. He must have done ten consecutive turns. I lost count. Richie gestured for me to join him. Paul and I were supposed to do the grand leap here. Richie, we can't do this, I whispered. Come on, kid, let's give them their money's worth, he winked. He whirled me around and lifted me above his head. He threw me up and caught me, then spun me out. I ran stage left and did grand jetés. Oh. As the music built, it was my cue to run and leap into Richie's arms. He was to lift me over his head and hold me there while he spun and hurled me into my last arabesque. My heart was in my throat. I looked at his face. I closed my eyes and ran directly at him. I leapt high into the air. Please don't let Richie mess up, I prayed. I was airborne. I could see Miss Barrent cover her mouth and gasp. I was airborne. <laughs> Richie caught me. It was perfect. Perfect. We nailed it. The audience jumped to their feet and roared, cheered, and clapped. That's my brother, I heard myself saying. Huh. Listen to that. That's my brother. That night, we all sat in front of the fire at home. Richie finally said to me, Okay, okay, ballet is harder than I thought. I really had to practice to do it right. Schema change. Well, I added, I'd have to say that hockey is way cool. and It takes a lot just to play the game. True thin slap shot? Richie said, holding out his little finger. Okay, dance king, truce, I said as we locked our fingers. Richard even admitted to me years later that this short course on ballet helped him on the ice. And the balance that it took for me just to stand on skates helped me in dancing, that's for sure. To this day, he still calls me Slapshot. And I still call him Dance King. <laughs> Isn't that precious, y'all? And here's the same photographs in the back. All right. So now, how does Richie feel about ballet? I'm going to add it over here. I'm going to write Richie. He now feels that it is way harder and it takes a lot of practice. 
way harder than he thought. And it takes a lot of practice. Again, you don't have to write this because we just discussed it. It's okay. Okay, but that is how Richie's schema folder grew. Okay, so this is what they may have started out with in the beginning was my schema. And this is how it grew. Okay, and my schema folder actually grew to include those thoughts as well because I can learn from the experiences of other people. And I now have learned that uh, hockey seems really scary. I'm never going to play it because of what Trisha experienced. And I've learned that ballet is a lot of work and it's really hard based on what Richie experienced. So my schema folder now has added new things to it. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go back and think about how our character relationships changed. Okay, just like we heard um, Richie say about Trisha, that's my little sister. What did Trisha, what did Trisha say about Richie? That's my big brother. Right? So at the end, Trisha is proud of her brother because he danced so well. And then what else happened at the very end? They did a little pinky promise truce. Okay, your sport is hard. Okay, okay, dance king. They made a truce. All right, you might want to pause it here because I added Trisha is proud of her brother because he danced so well. They made a truce. First, they start out, they're very competitive. They thought their sport was better than the other. You can't do it. Then Richie does it. Oh, or I should say, Trisha did hockey, played hockey, and he was like, I'm proud of you because you won the game. That was awesome. And then Trisha's like, dude, at the end, I'm super proud of you because of how well you danced. Very cool. Not only in this book did we see how our schema changes. As we experience new things, our schema folder is going to grow and it's going to change. You can always add things to your schema folder. Every day, actually, things are added to your schema folder and you don't even realize it. And also, things get taken out of our schema folder, especially, especially if you learn that the facts that you thought were true are actually not true. That happens to me a lot. So we also, not only did we learn about schema, discovered how character relationships change from beginning, middle, to end based on the problem and the solution that is woven into the story. Wow, you guys, what a fun book to read and to learn with. I hope you had fun. Don't forget to fill out your seesaw. We um, just, you're going to add the ending. So on the seesaw that you see today, I went ahead and typed the beginning in the middle, and today you just add the end. Okay, awesome job. You guys are awesome. Love you. Bye-bye.